Hey guys, and welcome back to Okami. There is but one final canine warrior to find, and uh, Kushi, you should probably hire someone to transport that for you, but God, God bless you for trying, all the same. <laughs> yeah, I did say that uh, we'd see how far she'd gotten. Not very far, but she gives us a holy bone L, which is a large one, which completely restores our solar energy, which is amazing. Aww. And to be fair, I don't know how she's going to get down from that shortcut <laughs> with that big thing of water, but uh, that's not our problem. I, I think it's funny if you don't see it. Like, sometimes comedy is the absence of explanation, you know? Exactly. Wow, man, I'd forgotten all about Shinshu Field, to be honest. It seems very peaceful right now. Well, yeah, because there's not a whole lot going on here. I know there's, like, a roachy just up the road, <laughs> but... Yeah, like, oh, I'm just having a drink now. It's fine. I'll be down later. Yeah, he, he's not really doing anything right now, so we can just deal with this stuff, and then it'll all be fine later. Ah. Oh, would you look at that? There's a canine tracker here. Ooh, How strange. Indeed. Oh, we made it just in time for the sun to rise. I know, isn't that lovely? Oh, look, what, what are you doing here, Mr. Orange? Do Mr. Orange and uh, Mr. Bamboo have the same, like, model rigging? You know, like, Amy and the dogs do? Because they seem very similar. Essentially, in They yeah. look similar in pasture is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, there are quite a few characters where you'll notice very similar body structures. I mean... And... It's fair enough, it saves time. Yeah, it does, and also it's like the kind of recall that I can stand because they're aesthetically different as well, you know? Exactly. There are times when you do not want to be reusing assets. Yeah. Because it's very obvious and it looks lazy. There are other times where it's just like, well, you know what? It's a time-saving measure because creating assets does take time. And considering how big this game is, you do not want to be wasting that. And also, you've got to cram so much onto the disc. Yeah, for sure. That, that's the other thing. Uh, sometimes you may want to create all these brand new assets and it'd be amazing, but they're not all going to fit on one small disc. Because obviously, this was PS2 era, initially. And they're not the biggest things in the world, not so really, no. you've got to cram a lot of data into there, so you've got to really optimise it all. So, where you've got the chance of uh, doing stuff, you've got to cram it in. Was that a reference to the statue of Hachiko or something? Is that what Easton was getting at? Oh, it, it might be. I'm not really too sure, but... Um, the dog who waited for his owner, essentially. Probably, yes. Could also just be a reference to, you know, Amy's statue. Annoyingly, there's not a whole lot on uh, Hayabusa's Wikipedia page, which is irritating, other than the things that um, is actually useful. Um, so, Hayabusa is a Kaiken which is a Japanese breed of dog. And he has, quite fittingly, the loyalty orb, because his real name is Chu, um, which in Japanese is Chuko, which literally translates to dog of loyalty. Nice. Um, his name, Hayabusa, um, is literally Peregrine Falcon, which doesn't quite make as much sense, but then part of me wonders whether it's a small little reference to Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, it's I probably think. not at all. It's just a normal Japanese name. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, when I think video games, I think Hayabusa, that's where I go. Explain to me the significance behind uh, Mr. Hayabusa here digging holes, mate. So basically, it's just another move that he has in his arsenal. He will dig holes in an effort to get you to fall into them, and then he will come in for the attack whilst you're stuck. Basically think of them like the pitfalls that the villager uses in 
Smash Bros. Ah, uh, okay. And, well, Animal Crossing, first and foremost. And Animal Crossing as well, but obviously Smash Bros. is where they use it in a, an attack form. Well, well, I've used it in an attack form in Animal Crossing on villages I don't like, I can tell you that. Tis true, tis true. And actually, we find out that Hayabusa is not the real Hayabusa. Oh. The original Hayabusa died, and so Chu came to take his place. I mean, they are dogs. Uh, they don't have that long of a lifespan. Well, I think it was more the original Hayabusa got attacked. Oh, and okay. I think, anyway. But either way, Chu says something about needing to protect Mushi from uh, something that is apparently going to kill him. Huh. So there's, yes, an arrow is going to kill Mushi and he needs to stay until that happens to prevent it from happening. So, huh, it all sounds very ominous to me. Indeed, well, we'll have to put on the back burner for now. We should probably head back and... Uh... Give uh, Princess Fuse the power orbs. Indeed, because we have collected them all now, so we might as well make use of it. See a dog. S W -E R. We'll deal with that later, don't you worry. We're not going to leave some sort of mythical old prophecy behind, like, though. We're in the type of game where prophecies mean something. I mean, we've already seen that uh, Waka's half-baked prophecies have some meaning. <laughs> yes, yes we have. Therefore, I, I feel we should pay at least some attention to the old Hayabusa um, saying that Mushi is going to be in trouble on his deathbed, basically. It's the type of thing where you hear it and you just go... Let's keep a log of that one for the future, because I feel that that could end badly for us. To be fair, Amy is a goddess and she has a lot of things to do. We can't just drop everything because one guy might die. And I mean, it sounds cruel, but uh, there's a lot of people in this world that can't be selfish and focus on one. Well, exactly, but also it's not meant to happen until the Kamiki Festival anyway, so it's all that we've got time. And now we're going to begin the Nameless Man's proper side quest. So, because he makes pots, he's going to make pots, and then he wants us to find a home for these pots where they're going to be appreciated. Hmm. Which basically means that you may have noticed the small little um, traveller's shrines located around the world. Uh -huh. Well, specifically Shinshu Field. This is where we're going to bring these pots because we can leave a little offering there, and they will be happy. Nice. Obviously, it's actually a relatively big thing in Japan, I feel, is that um, there are traveller's shrines located throughout Japan, or there are at least a lot of little shrines located in the mountainsides that, well, not even necessarily shrines, but they're just little places to pray and that sort of stuff. It makes sense, but also, this guy's gonna challenge us to a race! Ah, this sounds familiar. Running man! Indeed, and also I'm getting far too much butt crack <laughs> in this viewpoint. Far too much, far too much. Yeah, I can deal with a bit of army arsehole, <laughs> can't really deal with a bit of uh, grown man uh, thong and butt crack. Yeah, it was... <sighs> it's fine when it comes out of my mouth because it's expected, you're too pure for this. <laughs> Tom, just wait until later, we're going to be talking about far worse than a guy's rear bum. Rear bum? Rear bum? It's exactly the same word. <laughs> guy's backside, let's just go with that. End of conversation. Ah, uh, it's the front bum, it's the holy grail. <laughs> Alright, what's up next, Roger? Yeah, so we're basically just going to make our way back to uh, Kusa Village. 
And I really shouldn't have jumped into the water there because yeah, I was wondering that why. was a stupid move. I don't have the ability to walk on water, so uh, I don't know what I thought I was doing. I think in my head I thought, oh, maybe I can jump the gap. No, don't be an idiot past me. You can't physically jump that gap. Oh, well, you like. I know, but hey, why don't we use the mermaid spring? Yeah, why not? Why don't we use it properly? Yeah, well, th here's the thing. Um, up until this point, I never actually used a mermaid spring before. Ah. Like, in my original run of the game, never used them whatsoever. At least until I was much further in the game. Um, just because I didn't feel like I needed them, I just sort of ran everywhere because it was fun and I enjoyed it. But it's all good. We're just going to leap our way to Taka Pass. Nice. And head straight on up to Kusa Village because, yeah, we are quickly coming to the end of the second third of where we are right now. That sounds like dungeon time to me. You are indeed correct. Nice, nice. Uh, you know, I was kind of really appreciating the... Uh, uh, the kind of open dungeon design of the suit of ruin, so I'm interested to see what the next dungeon has in store for us. Well, it's actually quite fascinating because while the suit of ruins was actually seemingly quite big, the Gale Shrine's actually really quite small. Huh. It's it's strange. Like you would have thought that it would have been. A bit better, but either way. So I just did a little bit of a cross fadey there because something I realised: I never actually fed Take. I was missing a dog. Like I thought, I'll just make sure I've got everything because we are quickly approaching the the final stretches of taking the fight to Orochi, and I want to make sure I've got everything. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I realised, oh, I've got the freaking dog when I was here. So I thought before I go back to Kusa Village, pop by the Sasa Sanctuary, and then we'll actually finish the job. You know, the Sparrows are happy to see you, because you did save their princess and reignite their hot spring. And also we're feeding their dog, so I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> For sure. Really, they should be able to be feeding their own dog, because they've got a merchant in the next room, who is fe selling feed bags, but clearly they don't know what the bloody dog eats, so it's up to us as the all-powerful Amaterasu to deal with this shit. I'm in love with the simplicity of the game's visual style sometimes. I don't know why. It's just like wide open areas full of greenery is all you need. It's just so beautiful, and I mean, I also just absolutely adore that wherever Army runs, you get the flowers and grass sprouting up out of her feet, and as you get faster, the trail turns into these sort of autumnal leaves and stuff. It's just really pretty. It just it feels really satisfying to just run everywhere at the speed of light. Because, well, you're not running at the speed of light, obviously, but it just it feels like you're going super fast, and it's super beautiful, and it makes me happy. So it's all good. And obviously, stuff's still not great here, because there's still that whole curse going on. Obviously, we destroyed the worst, well, the bit that was making it, like, really unpleasant. But it's not all the way there yet. And whilst we're here, we might as well just give the manifest back to Haruka. Yeah. Just say, look, we did your job for you. You don't need to go out and get yourself killed. I was wondering when you were going to turn it in, actually. But, oh, well, as long as it gets done in the end. Well, yeah, I mean, basically with this one it was, do I return it initially, or do I return it when I next come back to Kusa Village? And I think in the end I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it when I come back, because all we're going to get is that gold dust, and we don't have any new weapons just yet to make use of it. So I was just like, well, there's no point in getting it now, well, now being then, so we might as well just pick it up on the way back. If we'd like picked up a new weapon and we had no other gold dusts and I wanted to upgrade it, then obviously I would go in and uh, 
sort that out, but uh, I didn't. And now I think I'm going to do a little, uh, something a little bit silly, perhaps. When does it end with you, Richie? It's just a, a never-growing list of incompetences, young man. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be okay, because we're going to see a little bit of dialogue that we wouldn't necessarily otherwise see. But what you're meant to do is you're meant to go into Princess Fuse's house because that's where she's waiting. Mm -hmm. um, but I reached this point and I'd kind of forgotten where she was located. So I thought, oh yeah, she's she's in the Gale Shrine. So we'll just pop in there and we'll sort it out. And then I got in and I was just like, wait a minute. Where is she? No, can't go in yet. And oh look, it's Susano. He's uh, doing his thing. He's a bit miserable. Still talking about some bloody demon possessing his sword. And yada 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 yada. Oh, so he's trying to like meditate his way through the barrier. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. This is Yatsu and he is a ghost, as you can tell. I, I can see that, Richard. He's a little bit blind because he sees us as a maiden most fair, and while that is technically accurate because you know we are a goddess, um, he clearly cannot see that we are in actual fact a wolf. But also I like how he calls Isun a little bugger. <laughs> well, totally, he's a little bug. Uh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Obviously he's calling him like a little snot monster, but... It looks like something might actually be going on with Susano. Like he may actually be somewhat possessed. Huh. Interesting indeed. Uh, I guess we better open the way to the Gale Shrine and get the sword then. I mean, that would be a very good idea, I feel. So we got to see that, which I don't think we would have necessarily gotten to see had I initially gone to Princess Fuse, which makes me happy. Because there is a lot of dialogue in this game which as I said, is context sensitive to the time that you speak to people? Yeah, of course, yeah. So there's a lot of dialogue that is really awesome that I'm just not going to get to see. Which is a shame, but it happens. Uh, it's just luck of the draw, really. Maybe that's less blows for you. Exactly. And finally, I realised you need to go into the house because that's where she's waiting. And also, you know, we're just going to talk to all the doggies because... Well, just to tell you because I feel... He, he's the leader of the pack, therefore he's the one who needs to be talked to. Yeah, they're, uh, they're decided to stay behind. They found new lots in life. Yeah, but it's fine, because we got the Satomi power orbs, so it's all good. Yeah, let, let's go with the bombs thing. That sounds better than just we abandoned our posts. Yeah, I feel that that's probably the best thing to go on. <laughs> but also, look at that visual glitch on those orbs. Oh, lovely. Yeah, that's the curse of the Wii version of the game. Things like that just get absolutely buggered. So, I hope we're actually going to get something cool, apart from just gaining entrance to the next dungeon. Uh, I mean, technically, yes, we are getting something quite cool. We are getting the Satomi Power Orbs, one which are going to be able to get us into the dungeon. Um, but they're going to do something else as well, but uh, that is not something I can talk about until later. <laughs> Aww. They, they kind of look like a replacement for the Rosaries, just the way they spiral around Nami. I would really like it if they were. That would make me really happy if the Satomi Power Orbs were a weapon. Um, but they're not, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. But they are incredibly useful for something that will come up in the next part, but that, that is all I can say. Fair enough, mate, fair enough. So yeah, you need these in order to get past that barrier, which makes sense. Kind of like in this 2D perspective you get when you actually come in here for the first time. 
it's really quite fun. There are certain moments where the game the, the game shifts the camera to that 2D perspective, and it is always fascinating when the game does that. Sometimes it's for the better, sometimes it's really not. But you take what you can get. That's cool. I like that. Yes. And now finally we can make it into the Gale Shrine to take down the Crimson Helm and for God's sake. Susana thinks he uh Yeah, he communed with the gods and got the thing open. Oh Jesus. Well I know. He's going to get himself killed. I, I'm not your babysitter. You can go in and sacrifice yourself if you want. But as for us, as for Abby, Isun, myself and Richie, we've got a dungeon to tackle. So we'll see you next time when we enter the Gale Shrine proper.